Hello there. I've been busy listening to some Big Finish audiobooks, as I'm quite a fan of their productions. I thought I could make some form of art whilst I review some of them for you. These reviews won't be as long as the televised episodes reviews, as I will not be going into immense detail, but hopefully I will give you some insight if you're interested in listening to them, or if you've already seen them, maybe you could listen to the review to see what other people think of them. I will refer to some details that some people might value as spoilers, so if you literally want to know absolutely nothing, stop listening, stop watching, go listen to it now. Two things to point out. One, spoilers of course. Second, you're probably going to be able to hear cars in the background. I do apologise for that, I haven't really the best place to record, so hopefully that doesn't take away too much from this review. Either way, enjoy. This time I will be reviewing the second in the main range or monthly range of Big Finish Audios, and that's Phantasmagoria. Uh, from my notes, I have stated that this is a fun historical adventure with uh, bold and rememberable characters, uh, with a great atmosphere and a story that is well paced. This is a story, as you can tell by, of course, the front cover, featuring the fifth Doctor, Peter Davison, and Turlo, Mark Strickson. This is, to be honest, a good story that, you know, bridges the off-screen gap between Tegan's departure from Resurrection of the Daleks and then Perry's arrival in the next story, Planet of Fire. Uh, in season 21. To be honest, this story wouldn't feel out of place in this season, uh, and it's great to see Five and Turlo go alone for a bit. Uh, I do feel though the cover and the title um, makes the story sound a bit more fantastical than it uh, you know, appears to be. I can see why it has the title, of course, um, but I feel the story isn't so much fantasy-esque. So don't expect something too fantasy based in that sense. It has got the hints of paranormal which the cover doesn't really, you know, linger on. But there are some hints, and they're not strong ones, but there are some. The, um, the story does seem very split in that sense. I know I said Five and Turlo go alone, but they literally do go alone. As for most of the story, they are separated and they, uh, they, they go on their own little mysteries and end up working together near the end. Um, this is only good for their characters in the end anyway. It's good to see them both uh, get some good character moments and you know have some great dynamics with the guest cast. There is a great cliffhanger between parts three and four. I never saw that coming at all. Really well done. A brilliant cliffhanger. It really shocked me. The villain, if not a tad weak, was you know a battle between characters. There was some characters I thought they were in league with because. There appears to be multiple types of aliens here. It was really confusing in that sense, but in the end they weren't. That wasn't the case. That did well for shock value, and really did add to some of the characters' actual involvement to the story. It made them actually important to the whole, the whole narrative. And oh, okay, that's why they're there. The setting was great. I kind of, I'm looking more forward to uh, historical stories with classic Doctors, especially in the Big Finish range as they always feel more, much more richer in atmosphere, and this story was a clear example of that. Uh, the story is very male dominated, uh, there are, if only, I think there's only one female character, I think that her, uh, I think it's Hannah, Hannah Fry, um, she's interesting enough though, you should have, uh, listen out to her, she's an interesting and good character to listen for. Uh, I would say for the, the pace of this story, is very consistent throughout. Even when something a bit more thrilling is about to happen, or something is happening, the pace, I don't want to say it doesn't seem to go anywhere, it just seems to glide along with it. Uh, being honest, this kind of made it much more easier to follow, and therefore a tad bit more enjoyable. I would say this story is kind of a relaxing one. I don't want to use the term background noise, but it's something that I would definitely listen to again to wind down to. That's not to say that the story is slow, or gentle, or dull in that sense, but then again, that always depends on how you interpret it, of course. Uh, I was actually shocked to find out that Mark Gattis, or Gatis, I don't know how you pronounce his name really, um, as you should know from, from writing Doctor Who, the, the from television series, uh, episodes, The Unquiet Dead, Night Terrors, Empress of Mars, episodes like that. Um, I was really confused and shocked that he'd written for this. I didn't actually know he'd written for Big Finish before. I know he's worked with them, I think he did Dracula with them. Um, also, I think he did something with Bernie Summerfield. I think he played a version of the Master. Um, to be honest, I feel like he should have kept writing for them, maybe instead of television. <laughs> uh, 
um, he's clearly got a great flair for audio, as seen by this story, because I would probably mark this higher than some of his own stories for television. Um, for the ones it's as good as, I would probably put it as on par with The Unquiet Dead or Empress of Mars, which, to be honest, are some of his better episodes, which this has the same feel. It has a bit of the same idea as The Unquiet Dead, in that sense. Has you can see there might be some references in that. That's fun in that sense, but equally as good. Uh, he also voices my favourite guest character for this story, Jasper. And if I'm correct, yeah, hopefully I am. Uh, I did listen to this story. <laughs> he because um, he was a very entertaining ally for Turlo um, to me through the story. And thinking about it, um, this, if this is the same character, you really can hear him in the voice. He well acted that and I didn't really pick that up on the first time but then realizing it was him you really I realized how stupid I was because it's clearly him um, the finale for this story does seem a tad more exciting I know I said the pace um, kind of glides through um, but then against like that of the sirens of time this one actually feels like it's been, been built up been built up for something properly and it kind of felt like a bit more of a satisfying end to me. Uh, and final note, overall, Phantasmagoria. Uh, I sum it up as a, just a fun historical hint of paranormal themes with a great cast, uh, building to a very satisfying end. Uh, great if you want some familiarity from a writer from the televised show. Uh, it's also a great story for Fifth Doctor fans or Turlo fans. Um, I would score this story an 8 out of 10. If you're interested, this story is available as download only at a price of 2 dollars on the Big Finish website. I hope you enjoy this review, I hope you enjoyed the art as well, and I'll see you another time for another review of Big Finish Audios and another art time lapse. Goodbye.